So help us understand this a little bit more. So if you have um, less resilience, how does that connect with psychiatric disorders? So that's that that's really I think that's a really great question and the right way of putting it. So the salience network, it helps understand what the salience network's function seems to be. And what was neat about discovering that the salience network was involved is that separately, people had been studying the salience network for you know 15 years, I accidentally did my PhD on it back in the late 1990s before we really <laughs> knew what it was. But it, its job seems to be a thing called cognitive control, the ability to self regulate your thoughts and your behaviors and your your emotions. What's unique about it in terms of the brain regions it involves is it has some brain regions that are part of the limbic system, the so-called emotional system of the brain, but it also has some areas that are part of the brain's kind of executive function and cognitive system. So it's out of all the various dozens of brain networks that are there, it uniquely seems to bridge between the limbic system and the cognitive system between sort of reason and emotion. Um, and you will see people activating it when they have to inhibit a particular thought in order to do uh, or a prepotent response. So a classic example of that would be the go no go task, which is a, a task where people have a signal that tells them to press a button and then another signal says no wait, don't do that. And so you have to inhibit that predisposition. So for example, if, if the banana comes on the screen, I pound the button and if the strawberry appears on the screen, I have to not hit the yeah, button. That's a great example. Yeah, okay. that'd be it. Uh, another example would be the the classic Stroop task, which uh, in the Stroop task, this is a, a tricky one. If you ever have to try it, you can. They have them online if you ever want to go and try them. The word blue will be written in red ink, or the word red will be written in green ink, and you have to not say the word, which is the thing you want to do, but you you have to actually push past that prepotent response and say the color of the word, even though there's an interference effect there. So the Stroop task and all these things volitionally activates your your uh, your cognitive control capacity. 